This is chapter 1.6, exercise 1 through 20. So this section of the book has to do with graphical transformations. And I'm going to work over these odd number problems. We're going to be looking at the transformations. Um, and we're going to be looking at three kinds of things here. We're going to be looking at translations. And translations, we're going to look uh, up, down, and also left, right. We're going to be looking at reflections. And we're going to be looking at uh, x-axis reflections about the x-axis about and also the y-axis and then one more thing we're going to do is we're going to look at stretches and compressions so how, how do we say that uh, vertical stretch And you can call them vertical or horizontal. And another thing is that, oh, well, we're just going to go over those. If a function is a graph function is vertically stretched, it's the same as horizontally compressed. If it's vertically compressed, it's like horizontally stretched. But we're going to go over those as we go. In exercise 1 through 8, describe how the graph of y equals x squared can be transformed to match the graph of the given equation. So if we have y equals x squared, that is our parent function. And what it's going to look like is this parent fun quadratic function is going to look like this. Roughly. And if we have this x squared minus 3, what we're going to do to that is take this function here and shift it down 3 units. So, as a response here, we will say vertical translation down three units. So that's going to be our answer problem number one. Next odd number problem three. We have y equals the uh, quantity x plus 4 squared. When I say quantity, it means the two things I'm going to say next are going to be inserted into parentheses. So I say quantity x and that quantity means that that plus 4, that's so that x plus 4 is going to be inside parentheses squared. And so what this is going to do, it's going to take, and I hope that a lot of you remember from Algebra 2, okay, we have, again, our parent function, y equals x squared, sketched here in red. And what is this plus 4 going to do? Well, counterintuitively, perhaps, what that's going to do is going to take that parabola and shift it to the left four units. So the counterintuition is that when you have something plus or minus inside parentheses, it's going to uh, go sort of the opposite way of what the sign is. So we're going to say horizontal translation and 
how is that horizontally translated? Left. And how many units? Four units. Okay, so that would be answer problem number three. Next one, problem number five. Now, this exercise set is really made to do without a graphing calculator, but in this instance, this is not so intuitive. When you take the, the negative of an X inside parentheses, that's going to usually f reflect about the x-axis and the y-axis, but which way? It's really hard hard to tell. What I'm going to do is graph this one. That's going to be kind of the exception here. I'm going to put 100 minus x, quantity 100 minus x squared. If we do that, we press enter. We don't see the graph at all. To see the graph, we need to adjust the window. And I go to window zoom window settings. I'm going to change the x minimum to 95 and the x maximum to 105. And so we press enter and we get this arrangement. So we are shifted to the right 100 units. Now interestingly enough I want to go back to the tab to see the see the equation here. And I want to change this instead of uh, 100 minus x, I want to say x minus 100 and see what that does. x minus 100 and press enter. And we get the same, the same position. So switching the signs inside parentheses and multiplying the whole thing by negative 1 doesn't alter the aspect at all. So um, anyway, I'm going to say this is going to be horizontal translation to the right 100 units. One takeaway I want you to, to get from this is that when you have a negative sign inside parentheses, that doesn't flip or reflect this uh, function, the graph function, vertically. When you have a negative sign outside parentheses, you're going to reflect vertically. Next. We have y equals quantity x minus 1 squared plus 3. What this is going to do, draw a little sketch again. It's going to take our parent quadratic, the graph of our parent quadratic function here, and this x minus 1. Well, that minus 1 is going to shift one unit to the right. And outside the parentheses, this plus 3 is going to shift three units up. So we have three units up and one unit to the right. So our answer to this is going to be horizontal translation to the right one unit. I kind of like this exercise, this particular one, because uh, what you're
you're doing, you're comparing and contrasting what the plus and minus do inside and outside the parentheses here. Okay, that'll be uh, upward. I'll say up three units. And so really, but that's the purpose of this exercise set to familiarize us or re-familiarize us with what these basic transformations are. The next exercise set, in exercise 9 through 12, describe how the graph of y with the square root of x can be transformed to match the graph of the given equation. And so it's, it's like we have this graph of y equals square root of x, and I'm going to draw just a rough sketch of it here. And in red, I'll, I will just make that. So that's going to be our graph of y equals square root of x. And we have negative square root of x. What's that negative sign outside is going to do is just reflect this graph of this function about the x-axis, which I have done roughly in blue. So our answer for this one is going to be reflected. Or I'll say reflects. How does, how does it do? Reflects graph about, you can say about or across the x axis. Now, conversely, if you had the negative x inside the, the radical, that would reflect about the y-axis, but we may get to another problem like this, just for your, to file that away in your mind. Next exercise, 11, we have y equals the square root of negative x, this time the negative x inside the radical, so that's really what I just mentioned, so to just draw a little sketch of that again. Okay, we have in red this square root function y equals the square root of x. What this negative x does inside the radical as opposed to outside is going to take that and reflect it about the y-axis. So, for this we'll say reflex graph across, you can say across or about the y-axis. So this is going to be a horizontal reflection as opposed to problem 9, which was a vertical reflection across the x-axis. Okay, so problem 9, vertical reflection across the x-axis. Problem 11, horizontal reflection across the y-axis. Next, problem 13, exercises 13, 16, describe how the graph y equals x cubed can be transformed to match the graph of the given equation. Now for this one we have a factor outside the x cubed of 3. So you're going to take a basic parent cubic function like this that will go up like this, kind of jog across the origin and then continue upward like this. So it'll be roughly this. When you when you go ahead and uh, stretch this, let me go ahead and just uh, when you stretch it, 
this thing's going to look like this. Okay, and I'm going to try to do that. Let me stretch it. It's going to see if I can get it to stretch. It won't even let me stretch it here. But I'll just go ahead and draw what it looks like. The vertical stretch is going to look like this. Vertical stretch is going to look something like this. Purple. Okay, it's going to be just skinnier here. Jog there. And then go up here. This is what a vertical stretch is going to look like in purple. So we're going to say uh, vertically, how can it be transformed? Uh, I'll just say vertical stretch. factor. I've heard it said vertically stretch by two. And to me, I'd like to say vertically stretch by a factor of two. And when you say by a factor of two, you're really underlining that you understand that it's multiplying by two that creates that vertical stretch. 15, y equals, in parentheses, 0.2x to the, the third power. Well, what that's going to do is this. You're going to take the same thing we looked at, problem 13. Okay, a basic cubic parent function like this. And when you multiply this out, you get y equals 0 0.2 cubed. So what you have to take is you'll have um, 0 0.2 to the third power times x cubed. And that is going to be equal to 0 0.008 x cubed. And so what that's going to do is flatten this out. And so this, this one is going to be quite wide. And so I'm going to just draw it out to the left. I know I'm not going to get this to scale. So the thing's going to come like this. Okay, let's make it way wider. Okay. That's generally or conceptually what this is going to look like. So we'll say vertically compressed by a factor of 0.008. Or you can say horizontally stretched. But we'll just say vertically, you can say shrunk too. Vertically compressed or shrunk by a factor of of 0 0.008 and again we got this 0 0.008 by taking 0 0.2 to the third power. Next on number problems 17 we have describe how to change the graph of f into the graph of g. Well, what we have here is the first graph is this square root of quantity x plus 2. Well, x plus 2 is going to be shifted over to the left from the origin. So that's going to be x plus 2. And then g of x equals, so I'll call this f of x. And g of x is going to be g of x is going to be taking this 
x minus 4, well, that's going to shift 4 units to the right. Okay. So I'm going to put a g of x here in purple. And so we have a shift to the right of or vertical trans or horizontal translation to the right of six units. So we will just say for this translate six units to the right. to get to get g and g meaning g of x or you can put g or g of x and then we have problem 19 we have uh, f of x equals quantity x minus 2 cubed, and g of x equals negative x, quantity x plus 2 cubed. For this, we have, like we've had before, this minus 2 is going to shift the basic cubic parent function to the right two units and this minus this negative x plus two cube is going to take this to the left two units and make this thing reflect across the x axis and so the thing is going to look like this. So what are we doing? We are translate or translating four units to the left and reflect across the x-axis. So there we are. Good luck on working out these even number problems is a demonstration of your learning, and thanks for viewing.